Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new Galaxy Z Fold 3 and today I'm so excited to compare it against my iPhone 12 Pro Max because I will be switching over and experiencing a foldable phone for the first time ever. I have skipped out on the previous iterations because they just were not good enough to use as a daily phone, but today you guys will see my first impression. And holy moly, that is one big screen. And it's cool how the box is so wide. Let's peel this thing back. Nice. I love the all black look. Wow. This thing is thinner than I expected, so that is good since we're gonna have to fold it. Looking on this side, man, you can clearly see that this is not glass, or at least the coating on top. That fold is very noticeable, but let's go ahead and try to fold this for the first time. Oh, that feels crazy. And now, wow, you didn't feel the weight that much before, but now this thing feels substantial, but it feels premium and really high quality, like a solid kind of brick in your hand. Now today we're not only gonna compare the physical design and comfort, but also the speakers, the displays, the brightness. We're gonna take a look at the cameras and much more. Now my biggest concern when I was ordering this phone is just how substantial it's gonna be, just how big it is. But looking at it next to my iPhone, you see it is much more narrow, it's slightly shorter, and the main difference is thickness. On the hinge side, it's about twice as thick and close to it on the opposite side and then when you flip it open, it's actually thinner than the iPhone, which is already a super thin phone. And holding in my hand this way, this is incredibly comfortable just because of how narrow it is. So I'm curious how the comfort's gonna be when I'm using just the front screen. And of course, once we open it up, Maybe you can one-handed use it, but you're only gonna access a tiny portion of the screen. It's definitely a phablet. Now, I wanna use it with the S Pen, so I did get this little kit along with it. And I have to say, it really is a shame that Samsung did not build in a slot for an S Pen, even if it was a tinier one because adding this on, I mean, look at that, guys. You have a lot more bulk, it's thicker, and you have this whole section. I think this should just slide off. Yeah, but you gotta keep this with you separately, which is a bummer. Yeah, I can't see myself using this case and this setup for long. It is just way too bulky and this flap is so annoying. So with that, I actually got a couple other things. I got the new Galaxy Buds, I got the watch. So I will be switching over for at least a week and doing a follow-up video, how a foldable phone is to use in the real world, especially switching over from an iPhone. So if you guys wanna see that, or a camera comparison between this phone and the iPhone, which both don't have those uh, telephoto telescopic cameras and the S21 Ultra, the blind comparison, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. And with that, you guys can help us hit our goal of 1 million subscribers. All right, and our screen is on. I've been logging in. It's just very interesting to use such a narrow display. It's tall, but when you have to like type, it is weird compared to this nice large display on the iPhone. So in order to add our fingerprint, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Bam, and look at that screen now. First time I'm seeing it with it turned on, that is a massive difference. I cannot wait to try out some Call of Duty Mobile on this phone. You guys let me know, do you guys wanna see a gaming video pitting this one, testing to see the battery life and if it has any dimming or overheating compared to the iPhone? You guys can comment down below, but for now, let's go ahead and add the fingerprint and our scanner is right there on the side. And of course, when it's closed using that front screen, that's your power button, so it's all in one. Now, before we compare the displays, I'm really curious about contrast and brightness in the HDR video, if I'm gonna have a worse experience compared to my iPhone. Let's jump right in and test out the speakers. All right, guys, that was interesting. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but I was pleasantly surprised with the Galaxy Fold. Now, I wasn't expecting that much because the speakers are only on one side 
And when you're holding it, you can actually block the speakers with your hands. If you wanna hold it the opposite way so they're floating at the top, then what ends up happening is you are touching your camera right over here, getting fingerprints all over. But with that said, and I didn't do this in the test, if you're holding it this way and you make sure your hands are opened up, you end up getting that little cupping effect where it bounces all the sound to your ears and it sounds extremely balanced on both sides because we do not have an earpiece speaker. We just have one on top, one on bottom. So they're identical speakers. So it's not louder on one side or more rich on one side. So overall, I'm very impressed with these speakers. Actually, there is an earpiece speaker just on the other side. It's a little cutout, but it could be using that same speaker that faces up. So overall, that is a great design. Now let's take a look at this gorgeous display. The first thing that I have to mention is that crease in the display. Now I just know people said it's better, but it is definitely noticeable. Even on a white screen, looking at it with it bright, I always notice it on a black screen, it is very noticeable. And then just swiping, it just feels weird. It is not a great experience. With that, I notice that little camera cut out all the time as well. I kind of wish that they just didn't put one in there at all. The fingerprint scanner on the side is plenty for authentication. I guess if you wanna do video conferencing, that's a reason but it just, it doesn't look great, but at least it's better than that little weird notch thing they did with the first gen. And the next thing is reflectivity. Man, this display is a lot more reflective than the iPhone. So it looks like maybe the coding that they have to do to keep it safe is just pretty much like a mirror, especially on black content. And in order to combat that reflection, we need brightness. This was also a weak spot of the previous folds. Let's go ahead and max it completely out. We're gonna set it to manual. Vadim, go ahead and expose for the phones. And based on that camera, you guys could see that at least in manual mode, the iPhone is a lot brighter. Now I'll go ahead and take these outside and here's a clip of how they look in auto brightness mode. And as you can see, they are basically identical when you leave it in that mode. The Samsung just can't get as bright if you're doing it yourself to save battery power. And as far as viewing angles, the iPhone is definitely better. It doesn't shift that much with color or brightness, whereas the Samsung, it's a lot more blue from the side and you do see it dim. So overall, as far as contrast and the creases, the iPhone definitely takes the win. Of course, one of the biggest differences in the display apart from it folding is the fact that we have 120 Hertz display support for the Samsung, not only on the internal screen, but also on the external screen as well. And this makes everything much smoother. So take a look at the slow motion footage. Let's do the last test, what I'm most excited for, and that is watching HDR video. I went ahead and I adjusted that top camera so the highlights aren't blown out and take a look at that. That HDR video on the Samsung Galaxy Fold 3 looks better. The highlights are popping more. The contrast is shockingly looking better as well. That looks crisp and because of the larger display, it just looks great. Look at that white that just popping. It might even still be blowing out that camera. Vadim, what do you think? What do you see here? Yeah, yeah, the Fold is definitely better. I'm surprised, huh? Even with the foldable screen, I guess it's their latest tech. And then of course, we have to deal with notch on the iPhone. This is a different aspect ratio, but let's stretch it out and see what we get. Gosh, look at that. Look at that notch getting in the way there. We're here. Yeah, I still notice that little grid, but it is way better than having a notch. Yeah, much deeper blacks there. Yeah, you're right, much deeper blacks. The highlights are popping more. That is gorgeous HDR. Honestly, guys, I am very surprised because I thought the iPhone screen would be better. And now let's talk about performance. I have Geekbench 5 opened up right here. And as we see, we have the A14, six gigs of RAM compared to the latest Snapdragon 888, which has eight cores and actually has 12 gigs of RAM. But of course, 
that doesn't tell the whole story. So let's go ahead and run this test. All right, and that's actually not that bad. Multicore, we're looking at 3349 compared to 4000. And this phone actually used to score about 4200, but it's almost a year old and I'm having some thermal issues with this. So it's slower a little bit. Single core though, we're almost 1600 compared to 1133. That's a 40% difference in single core and a 20% difference in multicore. But of course, these are just numbers day to day. We will see if I actually notice a difference in my follow-up one week real world review. Now we're also gonna test out the graphics, but first before that, I wanna do a 5G speed test because this phone right here has a newer modem. So let's go ahead and pop in my SIM. All right guys, look at this. On the iPhone, we have two out of four bars and on the Samsung, we have four out of five. Wow, the iPhone just jumped back down to one out of four. So it looks like we have worse reception, but that doesn't tell the whole story. So I'm connected to the same exact server here and we're pulling you know, from the same tower, just like thousands of cars do at the same time. Whoa, okay, yeah, there we go. We're seeing a pretty dang good difference right now. We have 50 megabit per second compared to 160 on the download, 180. 190, it just keeps going. And for upload, we're looking at about 18 compared to pretty much the same. So they're about the same there. Now that is a significant difference. Of course, this is just in one spot in a concrete building. I will be using this thing all around town. I'm excited to see how well it's gonna work. Now let's go ahead and jump into the graphics test. This is 3D Mark's newly updated test. We're gonna use Wildlife Extreme in the unlimited mode. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, and this is actually a significant difference. We have 2,062 on the iPhone compared to 1,255 score for the Samsung. That is a difference of 64% and that is massive. Now, of course, that does not take into account um, overheating or thermal throttling after gaming for a while. So if you guys wanna see that gaming test, go ahead and let us know. And now let's talk about the cameras. We have three on the back of each phone and then on the front, we have one more for selfie shots. And with that, as you guys know, we have that special under display camera when you open up the Galaxy Fold. And this is the one that I'm most curious about. Now I know the ones on the back are gonna be decent and we're gonna have that blind camera comparison against the iPhone and against the Samsung. That will be an awesome video, but I just wanna see how bad is this front facing camera. All right, oh, interesting. So as soon as you're actually using it, if you guys see at the front there, that little grid goes away. We'll turn off that annoying smoothness thing that they always kick in from the factory. And let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so I can go wider, yeah, a little bit wider there. But it's interesting to see all the noise that I see present in my face. I'm not used to that. Maybe five years ago on iPhones and Android phones. Now let's go ahead and take a picture. And this thing is going to do some processing. Bam, you guys see that was really blurry. Oh gosh, that still looks terrible. <laughs> that looks really, really bad. All right, so of course you guys don't have to use that, but let's just do a quick little comparison shot with the iPhone's front camera. And you guys let me know how big of a difference can you notice once this image is posted online and compressed? Is it that big of a deal? Of course, if you don't wanna use that, we also have this one in the front that is way better. Uh, but we will see in our ultimate blind camera comparison. So what is the verdict? Well, this has gotta be the hardest verdict, really. These phones are very different, but they are both the bleeding edge of technology. Obviously, Apple is playing it safe. Samsung is making an incredible piece of technology that they're iterating upon, and this thing has so much more to offer. There are downsides, such as the bend in the display, the thickness, the fact that the S Pen is not built in, but you do actually have an S Pen and you can actually multitask uh, with this phone. You can have multiple windows open like this. You can have three open. This is just an incredible device and I will really have to test it out longer to see if it is worth the $1,800 compared to the $1,100 here. Of course, with the $1,800, you do get some extras. You get more SSD storage space or internal storage space. There's no SD card built in, but 512 is good enough for most people. You get all these different cameras 
because I'm just excited to use this every single day and see if it is worth it, if now is the time to upgrade to a foldable phone from an iPhone if you wanna be on the bleeding edge. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above to subscribe and help us reach our goal of a million subscribers. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.